uh, the direct opposite, really. M0 ARW Mobile G8YPKO. G8YPK M0 ARW Mobile. Returning, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, when you asked, I wonder where I was, I was. Uh, Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Ambry DMFE, which is a dual band FM and DMR tier two handheld transceiver. Now, while searching the internet for more information on this product, it became apparent that this radio is also sold under different makes and models. Not really a surprise there. Whether or not the firmware is the same in each radio is something that I cannot confirm as I don't own any of the other models. Now the specs on this radio say this covers from 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 470 megahertz and that's for FM and DMR. Included accessories include a desktop charger, belt clip, antenna and battery and of course the manual and the radio. Now there is no frequency printed on the base of the antenna which is something we do normally see However, it does have a standard antenna SMA type connection, so replacing this is pretty easy if you want to. And the battery is stated at having 2,800 milliamp hour capacity, and it does feel quite chunky. Unfortunately, there is no USB-C charging on this battery or the radio itself, so you do need to rely on that supplied desktop charger to charge that removable battery. The serial number sticker also shows the frequency and power specification, stating that this radio outputs 5 watts of RF power. Now we'll test that later in the video. Now the construction of the Abru DMF8 does feel pretty solid and it feels like it could take a good hard landing, so possibly good for commercial use as well. The keypad has some nice rubber buttons and I'm pleased to say that they are all backlit, something which I find really useful in dark environments. Now on the left side of the radio, we find a rather chunky PTT along with two function buttons, which can be programmed in software. On the right side of the radio, we find a speaker mic connection, which also acts as a programming port when connected to a computer. On the top, we find two rotary controls, one for on and off and volume control, and the other is an encoder for changing channels. Now this fully rotates and is not channelized. A status LED and an emergency orange button is also included alongside the antenna connection on the top. Now turning on the Abru DMFA, I was pleasantly surprised to see a black background on the screen with the VFO information clearly visible in a white font. VFO A and B, one at the top and one at the bottom, can be used both at the same time. You can also program one for digital and the other for analog meaning you can monitor a DMR channel and an FM channel at the same time. You can even have memories or VFO or vice versa. However, when entering into the menu system, we are presented with that familiar blue background and radio settings. Now this radio does have GPS built in as standard and upon initial testing, it was able to find a GPS lock within just a matter of minutes, even with the radio inside my shack. Now the GPS feature does have some use, unlike we see on some other radios. The DMFA has been designed with ham radio operator in mind and the GPS can be used for APRS. Now when I say APRS, I mean digital APRS, which can be used with a Brandmeister DMR repeater or via your hotspot. Now there doesn't appear to be any support for analog APRS as far as I can see. Now the menu system is pretty much the same as we find on other DMR radios, but I think all of us who have used these types of radios before will almost certainly program these using software. Now let's take a quick listen to some received DMR audio via my local repeater. Now let me know what you think of the audio quality, because in my opinion, it actually sounds really good for DMR. So uh, yeah, it all seems to be uh, holding out okay. So hopefully I haven't jinxed it and touch wood, you know. <laughs> uh, they'll be, uh, you know, good. And uh, equally, hopefully your one will uh, be no problem at all. So, uh, yeah, it's just just one of those things that you think, oh dear, you know, it's... Uh... Now using the same local repeater, I tested the transmitted audio from the DMFA using the Para or Echo talkback feature of the repeater. It's just a specific talk group that you set the radio to. 
This is M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing. This is M0 DQW testing. M0 DQW testing. This is uh, M0 DQW Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio. M0 DQW testing. This is uh, M0 DQW, my zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing, audio, M0 DQW testing. And when we take a look at the power output on the 2 meter band at 145.5 megahertz, we see an output of just over 4 watts. If we then move up to the 70 centimeter band at 433 megahertz, we see an output of around 3.5 watts. Now up on the PMR band at 446 megahertz, we see an output of around 3.7 watts, but please remember it is illegal to use this radio on the PMR band, at least here in the UK. Now before we take a brief look at the programming software, let's look at the RF output on my Spectrum Analyzer. Now more recently, radios that I've tested have been absolute rubbish and not really worthy of using on air. However, to my amazement, this radio is clean, and I mean very clean. Now just look at the second and third harmonics on 2 meters at 145 megahertz. Well, there isn't any, so in my opinion, that's pretty good. If we then head up onto the 70 centimeter band around 430 megahertz, we can see the tiniest of peaks where the second harmonic would be, and measuring it, it's around 55 dB down from the fundamental. Now this is a radio which has been designed properly, and I would have no hesitation using this radio on air, feeling confident I wasn't transmitting out of band. So lastly, let's just take a quick look at the software. Now one of the most useful features on DMR is the ability to store digital contacts. Now this normally means that your radio will display the call sign, name, and even the country of the person talking. Now over the years, the DMR digital contact database has grown way over 250,000, I believe. However, this radio at the moment can only store 50,000 contacts and that's shown in software if you go right to the end of the file. So if you're going to use this feature, then you'll need to get creative when you're creating your digital contacts file. Maybe there'll be a firmware update in the future which increases this value, as I've seen this happen before on other DMR makes and models. Anyway guys, let me know what you think of the Abri DMFA or even if you have one of the other makes or models of this hardware. If you're interested in this radio, then I believe at the time of making this video is around 70 UK pounds. Not sure how that will work out in all of your currencies, but feel free to check it out on the link in the description below. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.